Real numbers, what a place to begin. So, you know the big old black board, you know the big old blackboard bold R as the real numbers, and that geometrically, the real numbers um, are the points on a line. Right? So, as it's a line, we've got one axis. And we've got two possible directions you can go on that axis. As opposed to, if we look algebraically, then what we see is uh, that we've got a set which is closed under addition and multiplication. So this is describing it in terms of its its operations, right? Uh, so it's closed. If you if you add two real numbers together, you get another one. If you multiply two real numbers together, you get another one. But this is not true for taking roots. So if you take a square root, a cube root, or more generally the root of a polynomial, you're not guaranteed that's going to be a real number. Talk more about that in a moment. And so what do we know about these operations of addition and multiplication? Well, we know that they are commutative. And so that means for addition that a plus b is equal to b plus a, and for multiplication that a times b is equal to b times a. Uh, we also know that these operations are what's called associative. And so that is that if we do a plus the sum of b and c, that's the same as the sum of a and b plus c. And similarly for multiplication, And we also know that we've got um, identities for each of these operations. So for addition, there's a special element called zero. And if we add anything to zero, nothing happens. And for multiplication, there's a special element called one. And if we multiply anything with one, nothing happens. So that's our identity element. And we also have inverses. And so this means that um, for any a, there exists a corresponding element b such that a plus b gives me that the additive identity. It takes me back there. And for multiplication for any a, there exists a b such that if we do a times b we get the multiplicative identity. And then here there's a little quirk. And in fact, it's not totally exactly completely true that it's for all. It's only true for all a that are non-zero. So we have this one special element, the additive identity, for which there's an exemption on that rule. And then we also have the distributive property. And so that is, uh, this is how multiplication and addition uh, play together. And so we say that um, multiplication distributes over addition, meaning that a times the sum is the same thing as a times the first guy plus a times the second guy.